All right, I'm going to start recording now, and um, I can send this back over to you guys later. Uh, so let's start off with some some questions. What, uh, Miss Jackson? I know you're kind of brand new to Active Classroom, so I'm going to show you how to how to add students and things like that. But I, I can show everybody here. But what what questions in general do you guys have for me right now about connecting with your students with Active Classroom? The, Nothing much for me. I just want to become familiar with the process. Okay. Um, all right. So I think, yeah, Mr. Eilenfeld, Mr. I think one of the reasons we we're calling this is because uh, Ms. Jackson doesn't have any really any of this experience with that. And if we, if it would kind of be like a refresher for everyone else, I think, okay. correct me if I'm wrong, but everybody can still use their hub because they have access to the hub to route to Active Classroom, right? Yes, everyone except uh, Ms. Jackson, you will not be able to. You're going to have to go right. directly to activeclassroom.com and log in. However, because I attached you to the school, you still can build your classes. And so let me start off with that. Um, and this, this is helpful for you guys, too, when you get to intervention classes. So even if you are, um, if you already have access to the hub and everything like that, this is something you guys probably want here. So I'm going to click here on assignments and, oops, no, I don't want to do that. Sorry. I'm, okay, manage students is where you want to start. Um, so, Miss Jackson, you will have to create a new class. And actually, everybody here, if you have an intervention class, this is where you can do that. If you can create, so just click on new class, give it a name. I'm going to title this one intervention. And I'm going to put dash I for me, Eilenfeld. And so, once you create that class, it's really pretty simple. You hit save and then you can add existing students right here. And so this pulls up, when you click on add existing students, it pulls up all of the students in your school. And so it can pull up all of my students and you can add them into that class. It's really that easy. And then when you're done, you just hit the save button and you saved with all of your students in that class. Um, so, Ms. Jackson, you will have to go in and, you know, look at your rosters and pull up and have to create all of your classes. Unfortunately, sorry, you got to do that. Uh, everyone else, your classes are already loaded with the exception of your intervention classes. Um, I had talked with Mike Dorsey at the district office a little bit about setting those up, but it was going to be, I think every campus kind of does their own thing with it, so it's pretty hard to roster those. So, what we did, uh, Ian, last year asked me to um give you guys the ability to kind of create your own and so we um we fulfilled that request to help you guys um set up those intervention classes do you guys have any questions about that i'm going to check the chat bar here just in case i think i think a good i think a big question that might be helpful and everyone might know how to do this but again because this is a refresher but maybe i know that sometimes it can be cumbersome to search by teaks so if i'm going to put together a unit i know that this has all been um, curated, if you will, to match our heat maps and our scope and sequence. But if I want to find certain activities by TEKS, can you? Sh I know that there's a special way you have to write sure. it in. Like the the spaces are important, if you will. So if you could just show everyone that, that might be helpful to finding resources that will align to the units that we're in. Absolutely. All right. So um, if you want to go in and search for search by TEK, uh simply click here, and then instead of search, which you can type in a keyword right here. Um, but you can also search by standard right here. So let's just do like 11th grade. Uh, let's do 11th. You want to select state content, not Common Core, obviously, and then hit the update button. And when you hit the update button, this does pull up all of your teaks. Now, let's say you know you have one that um, you want to focus on. So maybe you want to deal with Truman, right? You can hit update and it pulls up all of the teaks that have Truman, Harry Truman there. So this one has the Truman, Truman or Harry Truman and the Truman Doctrine. Um, obviously this teak has got a lot of content in here. And so right here, when you select this, um, it's going to pull up all of the teaks that are all of the activities that relate to everything in this teak. So everything with Soviet aggression after World War II, Truman Doctrine, North uh, NATO, uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, and it's going to pull off all of these different activities here. If you want to narrow that down, like maybe you want to focus on Soviet aggression, 
you can go up to this main bar up here and type in Soviet and hit enter, and then it'll pull up everything that has to do with um, Soviets. So it'll pull, it'll give you here, notice the Atlas of US History level one and level, where's level two? That's interesting. They, oh, you know what? They might not have. Soviet aggression? Well, no, they, the level two is the same content as level oh. one. I think that maybe we haven't done the correlations with the level two atlases for some reason. But the, so, if, so they're tiered? Yeah, well, yeah, they're tiered. So if yeah. you see a level one, just know that there's a level two with that same name. I apologize for that. I'm not sure why they hadn't correlated those ones yet. So, so yeah. Jason, is level level one's the easiest or the hardest? Level one's the easiest. So level one is going to be really so how high good. does it go? What's that? How high does it go then? Uh, just level one and level two. Okay. So uh, level and one level level now. Sorry, level level two is uh, more digital friendly. Yes, it is. Uh, than level one. Uh, level one is it's it feels to me like a like a PDF that you can write type answers into. Yeah. Uh, but the level two, you can actually drag and drop and manipulate more items. Yeah, and the level, yeah, the level two is definitely um, higher rigor as well. So let's see here. We can see it's called superpowers face off in the Cold War. Let me just clear this out. I'm just going to reset my whole search and just do superpowers. And there it is right there. There's level one. Here's level two. This one is definitely more um, digital more digitally enhanced. I mean, so this one right here, and you, you can now, this is something we just added. This was actually by request of some Houston ISD teachers. They say, can you turn off the answers so that if they want to project it to their students and they want to walk them through it, they can do that. So now you can turn oh, off that's cool. the And it does give you the capability to answer the questions and do all those things. Um, and so this, this one will progress. You can drag. Your answers and I'm not reading, so don't. Yeah. You got them all wrong. No, I'm just kidding. I know. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> yeah. So this one here, like the Iron Curtain, it has a reading passage. So you've got that dual coded or the the um, the multiple stimuli type of exercise where they're reading the reading passage, examining the map to answer the questions, kind of more of that. Yeah, and everything can be translated in you know, for our ESL geography class that this will probably be used in, right? Yep. Well, um, for a, a geography class, we actually have a new series. Uh, Ian, I'm not sure if you've seen it. It's called uh, Desk Atlas. So let me jump back okay. and um, show you a couple of different ways. Does anybody have questions about how to search by team? Where's the chat, Mr. Jason? I don't see the chat. Um, I can't type click it. The, click the cartoon balloon at the top on the toolbar, and it'll open up. Oh, I guess, oh and, thank you. Got it. And so also, uh, I wanted to add one more thing. Uh, something that you skipped over, Jason, was the in your main search bar on the right, it has the advanced button. Yeah, that's where I was going. If there. you click down. OK, go ahead. Oh, yeah. No no, wor no worries. I was just saying that. That's I was going to see if anybody had any questions about the standard search first. <laughs> Does anybody have any? Concerns or questions? No, I'm good. If, I'm, if everyone else is, uh, how much time do we have with you? With with you, Jason? I'm I'm here. What do you? Whatever you need. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you had something at ten or if you still had because yeah, I don't want to. I had. Um, I originally had a meeting at ten, but they they had to cancel and move it to later. So yeah, I can stick around. Okay. And help. Okay. Cool. All right. Um. So, Mr. Gregory, that was you bringing up the uh, advanced search, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so since nobody has any questions about the standard search, let's go now to what Mr. Gregory was talking about, and that was the advanced button here. Um, so you can search by subject, but I want to warn you, if you put too many filters on, think about it like a search. The more and more filters you put on, it can narrow it down, which is good, but it can narrow it down to nothing, and you might have, have filters that conflict. Um, so you might have something like, you know, you might be looking for something about um, – uh, let's do the New Deal. And then um, you may have something in here where you, an activity type might be, you might put in, notice these are all the different types of activities. You could put in a mapping activity and then accidentally you select psychology 
obviously it's going to filter down to nothing. So you always want to reset your search when you first start. So just hit this little uh, circular arrow right here to clear it out. Um, but this is also a really good way to search. So um, I don't... <sighs> I don't generally use subject area because sometimes it may filter out some things that I could still use. Um, I really like this series title search, but this is a little bit more advanced. You have to become familiar with what's an active classroom. And I want to point to this because you guys see here all the different names and look what's first. It says acting history plays. Then look over here on the left hand side. It filters in alphabetical order. So all of the acting history plays are going to come up first. The next series that'll come up, if you scroll down to the bottom screen, will be African American Heroes of the Civil War. So these indicate the series. Um, and so when you find an activity that you like, let's say you're doing a search over here and we did New Deal, and you're like, oh man, I really like these um, C3 Inquiry. Okay, you can go back here and you can actually just search by C3 Inquiry. And these are really good lessons. I will tell you, um, the C3 inquiry lessons, these are designed to do, um, what's it called, a jigsaw method of teaching. So um, you might have a topic in here, let's do like the Homestead Act, or no, that's, so trust busting, let's look at this one. Even though the Lexile level is lower, the reading level is lower, the level of rigor in these lessons is really high. Um, so it's very good for high school. Uh, this one here on trust busting, it gives us a background essay about, um, you know, kind of issues around trust busting. And then notice there are different groups on the left-hand side. You've got a history group, civics group, economics group, and geography group. You can assign these out and you can tell your kids, okay, I want you four to work together in a geography group, you four in an economics group, uh, so on and so forth. And the kids can communicate through a uh, discussion board. So let me show you how that works. Um, am I getting too advanced or I need to slow down and answer any no, questions I, about this yet? For oh, this sorry. one, I actually, uh, this is one of the series I had in mind over the next couple of weeks, especially for my AP Human Geography students. I just needed to find the right one, but I know that this is set up in a way that is going to be beneficial for their AP test because they talk have to talk about the different domains and it'll give them a chance to present online for their different subjects. Nice. So, um, yeah, very, very skills focused for sure. Oh, and yeah, History's Mysteries is awesome too. Great, um, great stuff. So for this one, when you assign something out, this may get a little tricky. So you're doing the jigsaw method. You, If you want to get really advanced, you can create groups of students. And then you could actually create your geography group, your history group. And then when you sign it out, you can just select, okay, I just want this to go to the history group. I want them to have access to all the primary source documents and then communicating results and taking action. Everybody should have that one. Um, so you can get really fancy with it and create groups, but if that's a little complicated, then the easiest way to do this is just assign this to the whole class and then tell the students, you know, U4 or U6 are gonna do the history group. And so when you do that, you can type in your instructions here. And, you know, if you want to list out the students' names and tell them who does, who's in what group, you know, here are the groups, geography will be, and then Tim, Susie, and so on and so forth. You can do that if you want to get really specific. You can even set the custom highlights here. You can change this, you know, make this ESPN if you want to. Um, I know you guys do that uh, environment, social, political, and or I guess E is... What's E? What's E? N is environment. Economic. Uh, economic, social, political, environmental. Okay. So, all right. So once you assign this now, I'm going to assign this to my class right here. Hit save assignment. Once you do that, if you if you guys are using, if you guys want to post these lessons in your hub, like for your daily things, you can just copy and paste that right in there. All right. So now it's assigned. So that Go ahead. Is there, Jason, is there a direct link, not just to this one, but to all of them that we can put in the hub that will bring them right into it like that? Um, yes, when you assign, but you have to assign it in order for it to go into the hub. Right. And then so once it's assigned, it, it generates a direct link, and then we can take that link to the hub? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've usually put those as like an LTI tool within the hub, mm -hmm. uh, but 
it's uh, this past year it's been kind of a little bit of a glitchy thing because you if you click the LTI link it would take you direct, directly to the home page with that with that thing listed on the first box and eventually it was just easier for me to list the assignment in the hub and then they would know to go to active classroom and click on the correct location the correct title assignment okay if I can jump in here real quick, Jason, because I've had kind of a similar experience. When it does something like that, just if you're, um, and I guess this is more directed at the um, teachers that do have access to the hub, but um, just be prepared. Just it's not a big deal, but you you um, might have to walk them through like the clever login process. Um, and I think that's probably just a factor of whatever junk they've added, like whatever VPNs or settings and things like that they have. And a lot of times they didn't, they're not even fully aware that they, they have these things. So the easiest thing to do is just when that pops up, if you usually at least the clever spring screen will pop up and then you can walk them through from there. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good point on that one. Um, yeah. Cause it does Houston ISD, even though you're going through the hub, it does use clever for the single sign on. So yeah, that's a good point. Um, so yeah, you can tell the kids to go directly into Active Classroom from Digital Resources, and this is what it looks like from the student view. So you see, I just assigned that lesson to my kids, and now here I am as Jason's student, and there's my very first assignment, C3 inquiry, was it a good idea? Uh, how good of an idea was trust busting? So now if I launch into it as a kid, um, there are my instructions. So I'm little Timmy here, so I'm gonna be in the geography group, right? And so that's where I'm showing you guys, the kids will see the instructions first. They have to actively click off of it to ignore your instructions. And then those instructions just live right there in the first icon. So the student icons look a little bit different. You've got instructions. This one here is for them to attach files. So let's say you have them do a graphic organizer because some of the activities in Active Classroom do have like downloadable graphic organizers. And so they can download the graphic organizer, print it out, you know, fill it in, or they can do it digitally on their computer and they can attach it back here. So they can attach things like that to the assignment. And then I'm going to come back to this discussion bubble and we're going to look at the annotation tool real quick. Um, so whenever students, any highlights or annotations that you set, like if you set ESPN in there, they will show up here. And so you can do those custom highlights and you can tell students to highlight certain things as you're reading, highlight it, add an annotation, save changes, and it'll keep that information in here. And you, the teacher, can go back and look at all of their highlights and, and give them feedback on what they're saying. Um, as Ian talked about earlier, um, well, first off, the printer button right here, but as Ian talked about earlier, this does translate into about 30 different languages now. Um, we added, I think, 15 this year. Um, so right here, can set your translation. It defaults to Spanish, but you see we've got Arabic, Bengali, three forms of Chinese. Uh, we even have like Haitian, Burmese, Farsi. Um, that Persian is Farsi. And then Somalian, Swahili, Tamil, Vietnamese, I think is a pretty common language in, in Houston, right? Yeah. Um, I, one thing I don't think I've ever really talked to you guys about before is there is a parent portal and remind me to show you guys what that parent where that parent portal is, because if you have parents that are at home that don't speak English, they still have the ability to do the translations as well. They can't type answers into their kids work, but they can at least assist the kids and help them out and translate into their own language from their account, too. So um, remind me to show you that before we go. Um, then there's all the other tools in here. It'll read to them by clicking on the play button. Um, also, when they translate into a language for Spanish, it does read to them as well. So over here, they can hit the play button and it can read to them in Spanish because we know like a lot of our Spanish speaking students that may or may be migrants, um, you know, migrant families or something like that. They may not be able to read Spanish because they maybe never went to school um, in whatever country they came from to learn how to read Spanish, so they but they understand it, so they can have it read to them, and I think that's really useful there. Um, it will not read like Vietnamese. I think it reads one of the forms of Chinese, but there are a few, I think it's like mostly the Romantic and Arabic languages that it'll read to them in. 
All right. Any questions about that? Yes, um, Jason. I I'm sorry. Just, just real quick. I got a. I got uh, like 15 meetings right now. I'm gonna. If it's okay, I can. I can leave and come back. Leave and come back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No big deal. Okay. Um. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try to do that. And then I have a, I think I have a long one at ten, but it might not be till two actually. But uh, uh, one of one of the things I was just thinking about is <clears throat> I don't know if you can I don't, I don't know if you even have like a favorite, but maybe if you can share like a favorite that a favorite series that you might suggest during this for like each content area. Maybe I don't know if that's like a, a thing that you might be able to do, or yeah. maybe there's a series that you like for all the content areas. But but just thinking about uh, you know the ESL geography, I know there's a I see Ms. Irahita, there's another geography teacher in here. You know what would be the favorite ones that you would suggest maybe for our current situation for uh, you know geography, world history, and so on. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to jump right back. I think this is a quick question that I should be able to answer, so I should be able to be right back. All right. Sounds good. All right, so um, I just wanted to show you guys a little bit from the student view, and so Ian brought up um, a good idea. So let me let me highlight some series, and I'm going to go kind of subject by subject here. Um, so again, Jason, yes, I'm sorry, real quick, I do have a question. Um, how does how do all these functions work on uh, a student that's maybe working from their phone? Oh yeah, I just saw your question pop up right there. Um, so when they're working from their phone, the best way for them to do that. Is to turn uh, to turn their phone landscape. So go from this to this. But everything, but everything works just the same. They can still complete the assignments digitally. All those awesome functions you just yeah. showed us still work. There's, yes, yes, yes. They can. I have ex I have experience with that. Uh, I, a couple like. If you turn it to landscape mode, you'll be able to see the, the content the same way you would see it on a computer screen. Uh, the only kind of glitchy thing is within many of the activities, they have uh, sidebars. And if you have two sidebars onto one page, uh, they actually mash together and you can't see the content in the center. And so you I'll have to click that. on, there's a small gray box in the very center if you click on that box it pushes the sidebar uh, to one side and then it takes the other one and pushes it to the other side so you can see the central content yep so what mr gregory's talking about is, is right here he's absolutely correct thank you for bringing that up um, so if you click on the little sidebar it collapses it there for them but they have to remember if they are working on this they have to remember oh there are more pieces to this assignment so they need to open that up and check it every once in a while then collapse it back down. So that's that's it. Um, also, with some of the um, the mapping activities, and I don't know if you guys have seen those yet. Uh, some of the mapping activities, it may be a little more. I mean, they can zoom in a little bit. It just might be a little more challenging for them to do that. So just be aware. The mapping activities are really cool, but um, it may be a little more challenging, especially on like a smaller phone. All right, any other questions before I go in and kind of highlight some things that you guys should probably check out during this time? And uh, probably also the with the navigation of the individual assignments, aside from clicking on those bars, uh, Jason, when you were just in an assignment, uh, one of the things that the students see, and I've had a lot of students make mistakes with this, is on the very top of every screen, it says turn in. Yes. There's a, a green turn in button. And so if if you click on the, the C3, the and if you're looking from the student side, on the very top you see turn in assignment. So I would warn you and caution you, so if the student goes through that first page and thinks they're done, they're going to come in directly and click on that turn in assignment button, and then they won't be able to complete anything else on, on this assignment unless you re-unlock it for them. That is very true. So um, the first time you assign something out, you might want to tell them in the instructions to make sure that they click through or record a little video for them and say, make sure you go through every part of the assignment before you hit the turn it button. Because this is like their table of contents on the left hand side. And so they need to work through that whole table of contents. All right, I'm going to hop back over then, and I'm going to show you guys a few of the. Um, well, actually, you know what? Before we do that, let me. Hold on. 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 Hold
point is, he grew. So who's your point? You at home worrying? I know about that. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. There we go. Okay. Um, so right here, if you guys click on the little question mark button, this is going to give you a lot of additional tutorials and information. So you actually have a full user guide here for teachers and for students. So you might want to send that to your kids or post that into um, the hub somewhere so the kids can look at that first. And then there's a user guide there for you too. Um, so those, there's a lot of really good information underneath that question mark. So just make sure you guys go back to that question mark here. All right, so now going on to what we were talking about. Did I mute everybody or not? I think everybody might be muted. Let me unmute just in case you guys have questions. There we go, so I unmuted everybody just in case you have a question, all right. So now let's go um, kind of subject by subject now. So I'm gonna click here on the advance button and I'm gonna go with series title. Let's start off with geography. All right, for geography, just kind of scrolling down through here, some ones that you really wanna probably focus on. Um, there's some good content with this current events uh, for geography. There's a great one on globalization. Uh, there's the new one there on the coronavirus. Um, so those might be some good activities to pull in, but you'll have to look at the content there. But the main one I want to point you towards is this one called the Desk Atlas. Um, those activities are formatted very much like that Level 2 U.S. History Atlas that I showed you guys. Um, so I would check these out. Uh, let's just take a look at these real quick. And the way it's structured, the way it's laid out, it starts out with global concepts. And so the first section is all world, looking at those global concepts. It might look at population growth, health and food, world economy, culture and migration, and then it goes region by region. So after it looks at kind of like the global scale of things, uh, then it, it'll do more of a regional study. Um, so right here, you can see that the kids can take these maps to full screen here, and we're looking at poverty percentages. And then down here, we're looking at comparing it with a political map. This activity does have multiple steps to it. So they'll have to, and it, it's increasing DOK. So it starts off with like depth of knowledge, like level one for the first couple, and then it moves up to level two, and then you're eventually hitting uh, level three DOK um, with some of these questions. So if you just take a look there. And so I love these infographics here. These are cool. So, yeah, so that's the Desk Atlas. That is a great one for geography. Let me see if I can highlight another um, another geography series or two. So Desk Atlas is definitely one you want to check out. Um, for your ELL students and ESL students, let me go down here. Uh, geography Essential PowerPoints. Those have a lot of uh, good visuals and things like that, and you can assign them out. The kids can download them and see the um, teaching notes that go along with those, and then there are some discussion questions and things like that that you can post in. Um, Histories, mysteries, you can use some of those for geography too, especially when you're talking about how like culture influences geography. Um, how to analyze maps and atlases. There's human geography. These are all videos. And then, of course, uh, some of the favorites are like Hungry Planet, Material World. Those are really good, too, for analyzing culture. Um, issues Today, this is a really good one for uh, geography. I would definitely use those ones. It kind of it gives two opposing viewpoints or two differing viewpoints, and then it has uh, kind of arguments for and against those differing viewpoints. The Mapping Our World, these lessons are awesome, guys. Let me show you this. I have teachers that their kids are just absolutely loving these. Take a look at the way these are laid out. You've got uh, close reading right here. So every unit starts off with a close reading exercise, and it just kind of gives that overview of the whole unit. So the first one is going to be world, looking at global concepts again. And so it's just a close reading exercise. It's real short. It's a one-pager that the kids have some different activities that they have to do along with that close reading. Uh, then there are 
differing activities. Notice it starts out with physical geography, and then it goes into um, looking at some of the political and cultural geography here too. And then it does complete with a quick write. So these quick writes, the way they're laid out, it's, you, it's lesson by lesson. So you'll notice the names of these match the same lessons over there. So exploring oceans and population, when you go back here, look, there's population and there's exploring oceans. So you can assign the quick write that goes with that activity. Um, then there's a quiz. It's about, it's really short. It's like a 12 question quiz. And then there's also a research presentation project if you guys wanna do that too. Um, so let's take a look at one of these and I'm just gonna show you guys how this works. Um, this is very much hands-on. And so the kids are going to be building uh, thematic maps. And so they're gonna be practicing those map skills that you work with them on. This is what it looks like in the teacher view when the assignment is completed. So you can see here um, that, oops, let me zoom in a little bit, zoom in. You can see what it should look like. It gives you an idea of what the students' symbols should have been when they are finished. But if you wanna take that off and look at it from the student perspective, you can take it to full screen here, and then the instructions live right up here. And so it gives the students step-by-step -step instructions so as they're reading through it, there are some little call out maps and things like that that show up. And so they can click on those right in the activity. World population map here. And so the students will follow the instructions that are laid out right here. And then it'll ask them to add in symbols. So it here says, use the text tool to write in symbols. So down here is the little toolbox. And this is where they just type in where they want to write. And so now it's asking him to add in a little factory symbol. And what I like about this is notice here, it only gives them the symbols that they need for this particular lesson. And so the kids will build out a map and it just has all the step-by-step -step instructions for them. The kids really enjoy these and, it, and what it does, is it makes that, I was, I was a terrible geography teacher, I'm just gonna admit this, I used to hand out outline maps of the world and have the, or of the continent and have the kids write the names of the countries, the capitals and color them and that was pretty much it. I didn't, had no idea what I was doing. I was stuck with like three preps on the same day and luckily somebody came along and helped me later on in the year and I got straightened out, but this is a little bit more meaningful. Um, so the kids are learning the political geography, but they're also learning how, um, how maybe people interact with the environment, different things like that. And they're at a level that your kids can really, most kids should be able to do this. And the step-by-step -step instructions are really nice because it just lays it out for them exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, so those are the Mapping Our World. Um, let me look for real quickly. I'm just going to go back and see if I can find anything else that I want to highlight for you guys. Uh, Power Basics right here. These have some readings for geography that are really straight and to the point. Um, you, can, you can actually kind of search continent by continent or region by region, and you can find some really good Power Basics readings that just kind of give the kids an overview of everything. And then another one, so Power Basics for Geography, actually that goes for US history, world history as well. Power Basics has some good, solid readings that are really at a level that ELL students can grasp. And regional geography, um, regional government and economics, these are really short readings. These are really good too, it's kind of region by region too. You've got Africa, Australia, Europe, Latin America, in Canada, Asia, and then South America. Right, looks like I've got a question in there. Let's see, what do you recommend for world history? Yeah, that's where we're going next. So let's look at world history. All right, so let's go here to world history and let's go through. Um, I really like those world atlas of world history activities. Uh, those are really good, and there are um, level ones and level twos, just like I showed you guys with the U.S. history. Um, if you want to really cover the content, these backwards planning PowerPoints, I will warn you, they're massive. 
when I say massive, they're like 120 slides and they have all the teaching notes in there, but you can do classroom discussions with these. And so there is a discussion board that posts with every single activity. And so you can tell the kids, look, I want you guys to go through slides one through 15, then you're going to stop on 15 because those are the discussion questions we're going to have. And you can then post those questions in the discussion board and the kids can reply back and forth in there. Um, so backwards planning PowerPoints are really good. They cover a lot of content, a lot of in-depth information in there, but you can pick and choose what you want the kids to look at. So Atlas of World History, backwards planning PowerPoints, the C3 inquiry if you want to get real in depth and you know do some heavy skill building that's a good one there's it's all about like inquiry based instruction how do we how do the kids look at compelling questions and then develop their own supporting questions and analyzing primary sources so lots of good things there um, debating the documents this is a great one for world history and for u.s history so i might as well just cover kind of both um, as we're going through this because those cover both of those topics really well um, decision making is structured a little bit better for in classroom, um, but they're they're awesome too. You might be able to think of a way to format it. Um, I had a suggestion using that discussion board to um, to really step that one up. All right, kind of going through here, exploring history and focus on world history. These two ones right here, they are really good for your low level students. Uh, there are U.S. history ones in there and world history ones in there. Let's look at this exploring history, and I'll show you there at a low level. So right here, let's find a world history one. So ancient Greece and Rome. It's written at a 750 Lexile, so you're looking at like a third or fourth grade reading level, but you may have students that really struggle with that. And so right here, we've got the early Greeks. And then there's always some type of mapping activity. And so I like these mapping activities because it's going to be similar to what they're going to see on uh, like the star test, uh, that, that shaded, you know, the grayscale type of, of map that they're going to encounter. And then the questions are pretty basic that go underneath it, but it's really good for just kind of doing that skill building here. This one looking at Alexander's empire and some questions there with that too. So those exploring history are good for, um, your students that are more in the struggling zone. All right. Um, focus on world history kind of follows that same. Uh, if you're looking for a textbook, Big Eras in World History is a text that you can assign. So it has a lot of readings there that it's, it's pretty much on or just below level there. I think with those ones, History's Mysteries are awesome. The Crime Scene Investigation. If you're looking for a high level, um, this is talking about like differentiation. The Historian's Apprentice is really good for uh, U.S. history and for world history. I would say you could even easily use this with AP um, U.S. history and world history because it's, it's really skill focused. Again, uh, the students are analyzing secondary sources and primary sources, and the activity essentially has them looking and trying to figure out which, which primary sources would best support which secondary sources. So that's that high level you know, DBQ building type of stuff. Um, I haven't really dug into this one yet, but this is kind of neat, this history versus history. You might want to check those ones out. Um, I haven't dug in enough to know. There's interviews with ancient history. Um, the the history versus history ones? Yes. Uh, those, for me, I, I tried that once, and I feel that that needs to be kind of an in-class together situation. Okay. Uh, it might be a little bit too complex for most students uh, gotcha. right now. Okay, thanks for, hey, thanks for the input. Um, oh, history unfolding, I completely skipped over this one. Uh, this is a great primary source <clears throat> activity. They're very short. Um, it usually gives you like three images and there's, you know, there's three tabs on the left-hand side with different images and they're really short, but the questions are good. They're um, kind of that scaffolded questioning. It might start off with like, what's the main idea? And then it might build towards like inferencing and bias. Um, so the history unfolding, those are good short little activities. And there's like 300 of those in there. So there's a ton that you can use. World history, US history. I think you could even use some for uh, government and geography as well. Um, all right, kind of just going through here. 
me just see National Center for History in the Schools. Those are really good lessons too. Um, I think it's mostly early U.S. history though. Um, again, Power Basics, I mentioned that earlier for world history and U.S. history. Short texts, these ones are good too. Um, they're, they're tiered as well. There's a, there's a level one and a level two activity that you guys can use for that one. Um, and then some videos down here, Unfinished Nation, these are short videos, and Turning Points in History, those are short videos as well. Uh, Turning Points, I think, is U.S. and World. Unfinished Nation, I think, just focuses on U.S. history. And then uh, these U.S. history readers are awesome, too. But again, that's just U.S. history and world history activators. That's more for an in-classroom type of thing. Those are simulation type of activities. All right. Um, does anybody want me to cover? Let me see. We probably need to cover economics, government. Psychology and sociology is really easy. Let me show you real quick. I'm going to jump back to the home screen. Um, you guys do have these um, curriculum maps. They have not been updated, though. Houston ISD, we decided not to do an update because I think your uh, TDSs, when they're writing the curriculum, they're embedding some things. And so we decided not to go this route, I think, for um, all the other courses. But right here, and I'm not in the Houston curriculum app, so you won't see these, but um, the psychology and sociology, these are laid out for you very much like a full course. So if you take a look at this, it's opening slowly. I'm going to click on psychology. There we go. Psychology is laid out like an actual course that you can just assign out to your students right here. So you've got your core content. You've got right here, introduction to psychology, research methods, biopsychology, behavior, sensation, perception. And so this is laid out very simply for um, those courses, but that's just something that we did as a company for psychology and sociology. And then um, everything else is kind of embedded in the hub in a lot of cases, but there's some additional activities that you guys can look for. The, uh, sorry, Jason, does that exist for uh, human geography for any of the AP subjects? No, we don't have human geography in there yet. Um, I think I think our human geography, we don't really have a, any AP courses in here. There are things okay. that work with AP, but we don't have anything that, you know, the AP, the they, they're, they're kind of changing up the way that they do things. And I think they're trying to do more of the curriculum entirely themselves. And Monique, mm -hmm. have you heard that as well? I don't know if you deal with AP at all. No, I haven't because um, uh, we don't really deal with AP very much. There's another department that does that. That's right. I forgot. And yeah. from, yeah, from that. yeah, from that side, I have not. Aside from the 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 team lead for Human Geo in the PLC that I attend, uh, there's really not a lot of district level support for AP, at least for Human Geography. I know you guys had uh, Susanna left the district this year. Yeah, um, she was. She left in the last summer. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, wish, I wish I could help you more with that. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't. Um, so let me go over here and let's talk real quick about government and economics. Um, so, government and economics. I'm just going to highlight a few. Um, let's go through here, basic economics concepts, basic money management. Those are going to be your kind of straightforward, lower level um, things in here, but they're really good for, you know, starting off with those, those big concepts. Um, economics at work. Um, let me see here. Government activators are really cool, but they are more for a classroom type of thing. Those are like simulations, but you're putting students in scenarios and like civic situations where they're having to decide what they would do and, and kind of role play, kind of like uh, court cases and, and different things like those. Those are awesome. High school economics, this is like kind of your on level to kind of high level types of uh, economics readings. It's a, you know, kind of like a text. Pretty updated too. I think it's like 20, 
15, 16, something like that. Um, hmm. There are more in here. I'm just, I may be scrolling through kind of fast. Uh, Project-based government and economics, those are a little bit harder to do. Um, you probably may not use those in here. Let's take a look at the actual courses themselves. That might help me a little bit better. Um, so if you go into economics right here, I know there's things like uh, you got the basic economics concepts. Quite a few of these ones in here. Yeah, we're still dealing with basic economics concepts. You'll, you'll be able to cover the majority of it even has the subprime crisis there of 2008. And then it does have some decision making, some current event recommendations here. Um, so there are some other activities and lessons that are kind of sporadically put in. Um, economics at work, those are the videos. And um, the everyday life, I like the everyday life for those actually cover a lot of different content areas and they're really interesting readings. Uh, fundamental economics concepts, framework for democracy videos, those are good for both government and economics depending on the, co the subject or the content for that one. Um, personal finance, these are really good. Like if you, have, if you guys have a PFL course, if you're teaching PFL, um, these are really good for that, but they're also good for just kind of embedding these into your economics classrooms. The, the videos are cheesy. The guy's the guy's funny. He's like he's like dad jokes all the way. He's totally me, um, totally goofy, and uh, the kids tend to like those. He's kind of silly with it, but the the activities that go along with it are really good. Like the kids are creating budgets. Um, they're having to you know work out supply and demand curves and things like that. Um, then it does have like some of those regional geography, which are the low level ones. And then it does have some of these turning points. And then of course the smart songs, uh, these are great for um, government economics. You can even use some of these in the US government. These are these two um, goofy white guys that do these raps and um, they're, they're kind of fun. The kids like them, they have good beats and stuff like that. All right, so that's kind of your quick overview of everything in here. I know I kind of went a little long on some things, so I'm gonna stop and and ask you guys what questions do you guys want to see what the discussion boards look like i'll show you guys the discussion board i'll go here real quick i see a little did i mute everybody here unmute. okay so let me show you the discussion board and so when you post like that one i did here the trust busting um Oops, that's, you can select, you can edit forum participants. I don't want to do that. I just want to go into the assignment or into the discussion board. And so I post it as a general discussion right here. And so you can post right here questions. And so you can say, so um, from a geo standpoint, how did trust busting affect geography and so you can post these questions in here and then the kids can reply back and they will show up they can reply to your comments you can post a new thread you can drop in a video here or something like that as well um, so right here you can add an image you can insert a hyperlink so if you want to take them somewhere else you can do that it's a great way to when the kids are working remotely from home a great way to connect with them there all right. Any other questions? I know we went a little long here, so um, if you guys have any other questions, anything I can help you with, please let me know. Um, Jason, could you drop your email maybe in the chat so oh, that sure. um, oh, if anyone has questions? For some reason, I cannot enter anything into the chat. It might be. Because, oh, I'll drop it then. I have yeah, it. Jason at socialstudies.com. Thanks, buddy. No problem. Oh, wait, what is All right, so yeah, if you guys get stuck on anything, reach out to me. You know, I'm I'm available to do these one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, I am taking this afternoon off, um, so I'm I'm cutting out early today. I'm leaving about noon, but I'll be back on Monday morning, 7 a.m. So if you guys need me, reach out. Plus, um, if you have a question that I can answer via email, just, just email me. I, I tend to answer those sometimes 
I try to answer them over the weekend too, but not always. Um, I've been working, we've been really, really swamped for the last two weeks with thousands and thousands of requests. So um, I'm going to try to give some time to my kids this afternoon and this weekend and really spend time with them. It's been, it's been hard with them home. They're knocking on my office door all the time. I'm like, you guys got to go away. Leave me alone. I'm super busy. Um, anyways. All right, guys. Well, enjoy. Um, enjoy, you know, working with your kids online, connecting with them. Um, and hopefully this will be helpful for you guys. Any Thank questions? you for doing this. Okay. Um, yeah, Jason, I, I just have, ah. Go ahead, Monique. Okay, I just was wondering, how will we get the recording? Um, so what I'm gonna do is once, once it's over with, I am going to convert it to a YouTube link and I will send it to you. It takes a little while because it has to process, um, right. but I should send it over to you. Hopefully it'll be done before noon and I can send it over to you. Thank and you. if Go it's ahead. easier, you can just send that to me or Ian and I can get it, disseminate it from there. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it. Um, John, if you could shoot me an email just so that I've got your your email. Sure, do it right now. I'll send it to you and I'm, Monique, I'll copy you on it too. Thank you, right. Jason, for doing this. This was great. Thank you as well. Oh, you're welcome. Not a problem, guys. All right, well, I'm going to